Hello, and welcome back to the Shugly Shed. Who are you again? Yes, it's been quite a long time, over a month, I think, since my last video. Uh, and basically, I don't know, the, how can I explain it? The easiest way to explain it, I suppose, is that I have had too many pots boiling um, and also burnt the candle from both ends and a few things have conspired against me um, and a few things I seem to have conspired against myself but uh, the long and short of it is we've, oh, we're over a few hurdles now and um, if you follow my Instagram you'll know that I embarked on another personal project on a 1955 Dodge truck uh, that turned out to be a bit more work than I expected um, it wasn't like a full restoration job, which wants to get it back on the road, but that kind of ate up a lot of my time and funds. Uh, but that was a kind of welcome respite from the VMAX, because the VMAX had hit a bit of a roadblock with regards to the front end. And that's what I'm going to cover today. This absolute saga that has been the forks um, for the VMAX. I'm going to chuck you back to before, well before Christmas, um, a few months before Christmas, I think, possibly, like October to when I stripped down the R1 forks. Hello and welcome back to Shrigley Shed Motors. Today's job is to strip down the Yamaha R1 forks that we've had fitted to the VMAX. These are basically going to get a full refurb. Uh, the stanchions are going to get re-chromed, the casting is going to get powder coated and the sort of top section is going to get anodized. Um, yeah, so there's a lot to get done to these forks, but basically um, we want to bring them back to like fresh condition. Uh, the only other thing we're going to do to these forks is replace the internals. Um, the VMAX is obviously a lot heavier than the R1, so we need to match the internals to the weight of the bike. But we'll, we'll come to that. Um, today we're just going to be stripping them down uh, and then yeah, getting things various, you know, off to various coatings and things like that. So believe it or not, these are actually the first set of upside down forks that I've ever had to strip. Um, never had to strip anything like this before. The forks that I've usually been working on have been sort of regular, like the right way up forks. Um, I'm led to believe that stripping them isn't too bad. Uh, it's the rebuilding is a little bit of a different sequence than, than I might be used to. Um, so I'm not too worried about this stage and like I said earlier, we'll be replacing the internals. So I'm going to cross the rebuild bridge when I come to it. Um, upside down forks if you're not familiar usually forks are kind of this way around the stanchion goes down into the lowers whereas upside down forks obviously they're upside down so the stanchion goes into the upper part of the fork and um, it means that this part of the fork is much fatter and much more stiff and um, they're generally found on more like performance bikes and that kind of thing and uh, switching them out onto the VMAX is just that added wee upgrade for the bike these are from a 2002, I think, Yamaha R1. They are 15mm longer than the newer R1 forks, which helps because the, the fork is shorter than the VMAX stock fork. So when you put a shorter fork on, obviously you'll you change the head angle um, and the rake of the bike. So that was quite important to get these forks. We did actually purchase the wrong forks first. So, you know, you learn some lessons the hard way. Right, first things first, I'm going to drain some of the oil out of it. Um, basically, I'm going to crack the top here, the top cap, unscrew that and just pour out as much oil as possible so that I don't make too much of a mess. Rebuilding forks is a messy job anyway, but I'm um, trying to limit how much mess I make. Gloves are a good, good idea as well. So when you rebuild forks, it's a good idea to wind back all the adjustments. Um, just so that there's reduced pressure pressure on the springs and things like that just make your life a little bit easier especially when it comes to rebuilding so that's both those adjustments wound right back now it's off with the top cap it's nice and smooth you usually find if you haven't wound those back it will be a little bit more difficult to unscrew that top cap So that's it free. 
it's attached to the lower just now, but like I said, I'm just gonna drain the oil out of this. Pretty manky oil. You can always tell when a fork's not been rebuilt in a while by the colour of the oil that comes out of it. Right, this is quite complicated to explain. Um, you do get specialist tools for this, like a spring compressor tool for, for upside down forks. This is my little tool hack. <laughs> Hopefully it works. Um, this is a bearing splitter that I've got. Uh, it's just like an assembly of, of clamps and things for, for pulling bearings off of shafts, that sort of thing. Um, what I've done is I've basically brought it in enough to grip the top of the, the tube on top of the spring, which is the bit you want to compress. I've got a ratchet strap running over the entire fork right down and then through the axle hole at the bottom of the casting and hopefully when I ratchet this up it will compress the spring uh, sufficiently that I can get into the lock nut to then remove the top cap so let's see if it works. <laughs> So I want to get a spanner into the lock nut under here and my big spanner on the top of the fork cap here and then loosen them off. It shouldn't be too tight. There's a torque setting for that so it shouldn't be too tight. Now that that's loose, should in theory be able to unscrew the cap from the rod. Tricky operation this. I'm sure the correct tool would make this job easier but you work with what you have right? If you had the correct tool for everything have more tools than you know what to do with. It feels like that's almost off. He says. off. There we go. So now, there we go. I'm going to release the tension on my ratchet strap as slowly as I can. Not very slowly. Right, so Take this out of the vise. Should, in theory, be able to withdraw the spring and the lower assembly. Just like that. Right, so these forks have a cartridge on the inside and kind of like regular forks where you loosen the dampening rod bolt, uh, there's a bolt in here which you need to kind of get at from this hole on the side of the fork. However, the cartridge will just spin when you turn that bolt. A little bit like a dampening rod if it's not held still or if you're not lucky which you can sometimes can just come loose but if you're not lucky it will just spin and continuously spin. Um, so you need to be able to hold the cartridge. Um, they obviously they'll sell specialist cartridge holding tools but need a tool make a tool is my philosophy in life. So this is what I've come up with. It's actually an old piece of uh, stanchion from an old set of bent forks. Turned it down in the lathe so that it was narrow enough just, just to slide into the fork tube. 
Um, I've welded in a, an old socket into the end so I can hold it with a, a socket. Uh, and I've got these little sort of prongs, these tangs on the end here, which will slot into the cartridge. Here's one I made earlier, basically, because I've already taken one out. I was testing it. Um, but as you can see in here, I don't know if you can see that, there's four little um, kind of notches. And these two prongs will fit into two of those, like that. And that holds the cartridge nice and still, so you can undo the bolt from the other end. So I'll do the other one now and show you what I mean. worked really well my little ratchet setup worked well and and my uh, cartridge removal tool worked really well so that's like one of the most satisfying things is when you need a tool and just make do with what you have and it, it works um, there's nothing more frustrating than figuring out that the manufacturer has designed this in a certain way that only their one specific tool will will remove it and um, it's much more much more fun to get get around that Anyway, I've got a job ahead of myself to clean all these parts. Uh, once they're all clean, I'll bring you back and then I'll tell you what's happening next. Okay, so optimistic Ewan from October um, hoped that it would just be a case of taking all those parts to various coaters, getting things done, getting it all back and reassembling. But uh, as the saying goes, best laid plans often go awry. Um, let me just get my coffee for this tale of woe. Uh, so, what happened was, the sanctions went away to get re-chromed by Philpots. Uh, Philpots do all my re-chroming for forks and just like always, they did a brilliant job. Uh, the sanctions looked absolutely immaculate and brand new, really chuffed with that. Um, the next thing we wanted to get done was a titanium nitride coating, a black titanium nitride coating uh, over the chrome, uh, which basically turns the chrome black. Just for an aesthetic thing, it would be quite cool to have black sanctions. Um, so we sent them away to a specialist to get that done. And that's where our problems began. Uh, the titanium nitride coating didn't work. And the finish was, I mean, just completely unusable. So we had to have that finish stripped off again. Luckily rescuing the, the chrome underneath, because Philpots did such a, a good job with that, it would be a shame to ruin that. Uh, the next option was to go down the avenue of DLC coating, which is a diamond-like coating. It's a sort of black carbon coating. Again, it's meant to... Um, uh, it's. I think it, it improves some kind of technical aspects and performance, but mainly it was an aesthetic choice to have black stanchions, just another option for black stanchions. So they went to another provider to have that done and it seemed to have worked really well. Uh, it took a lot longer than we anticipated, uh, a few road bumps along the way. But when the sanctions showed up in our hands, the coating had started to deteriorate uh, with no real explanation as to why um, and no one seems to be able to figure out why. But either way, uh, this was running on for months now um, with the sanctions floating about various different coaters and people not communicating correctly and essentially um, our kind of customer needs falling by the wayside 
maybe, for want of a, a better way of putting it. Um, I'm not going to name names because it's not my style, but we were really, really, really let down by our coaters. Um, both in communication, customer service and the finish. Um, the same coater that did uh, some of our fork parts also did some other parts for the bike, lost some parts that I had fabricated by hand, I had to remake. Um, that dragged on quite a bit uh, and then some parts that we got back from the coating, the finish was just shocking frankly, especially for the money involved. So, you know, things had to be repaired by myself or redone elsewhere. Um, parts of the forks got lost as well. The castings from the feet got lost. I had, uh, we had to, at our own expense, go and buy another set, another few sets of forks and strip them down to get feet off them, get them coated, you know, at our local guy, and then send them all the way um, to get rebuilt so it has honestly i mean i'm just checking my camera that's like three and a half minutes i've just been telling you this story and that doesn't even cover the half of it um it's infuriating to have these kind of issues and i think the most frustrating thing for me is that there's nothing i can do from this end there's nothing you can do to speed it up once you sent your parts away they're in the hands of other people um and you know if you want a job done properly do it yourself as the, as they say uh, anyway, lessons have been learned. Moving forward, I do have now forks on my workbench over here. Uh, we got all the parts back eventually and we got uh, them built up by um, Sean over in Fife. Uh, I'm going to get his company name wrong, GSG Suspension, something like that. Um, I'll, I'll correct it if, it if I've got that wrong. Um, built up with new KTEC internals. Uh, I remember I, I maybe mentioned that because of the weight of the VMAX compared to the R1 that the forks were originally from, I had to get suspension upgrades inside to cope with the weight of the VMAX. So that's all been done. Uh, the forks are now here. Unfortunately, or sadly, they are they are chrome stanchions. They're not black. Um, we just we were running out of time to get this bike finished, uh, and frankly, the headaches involved with trying to get black stanchions just wasn't worth it. Um, but that said, we have it back. I also have a few other things back from paint, from the paint shop, which I'll show you as well. Uh, but mainly now I'm just going to get this front end back together so that we have a rolling bike and uh, yeah, I can start to get a bit more motivation about getting this bike sorted because it really has been rock bottom motivation considering the, the hiccups, the major speed bumps that we've had over the last few months. Anyway, thank you for listening to my absolute rant. Um, and like I say, I'm not going to name names or anything because it's not my style, but um, all I will say is that I don't believe everything you see on the internet and um, even the best in the game can sometimes drop their standards and fortunately we were on the, the sharp end of that. Anyway, enough said, let's get this front end together.
duty calls. Well, I suppose that comes with the territory of being an on-call firefighter. Um, anyway, I, I just went ahead and finished bolting up the, the front wheel um, and I bolted on the brake caliper as well, which I'll show you in a wee second. Uh, I was going to just give you a quick rundown of a few other things that I've done to the bike in the meantime. Um, stuff that wasn't really worthy of an entire episode, but you know th things that are important to the bike regardless. So first up is our first seat. I don't know if you remember me mentioning that I'd made two seat pans in order to have a daily rider seat and then also a show seat. So this is the daily rider seat um, made by Scott Rigby. Um, it's got the cool kind of like rising sun and the kanji on it. Um, really nice red stitching on it, good grain leather and it's got that nice hump to sit into. Um, fits the contour of the bike really nicely. Obviously it's it's made on the, the seat pan that I made. Um, we've also fitted up a little carbon panel on the back just to neaten off this area. Filler cap's done as well. That's looking pretty trick. It's done in the same finish as the valve covers. So that ties in quite nicely to that bit. Um, we also have side panels are back from paint. They are similarly that kind of very very deep crimson as the the, the fender is. And then the Cerakoted um, mesh in the middle kind of completes that bit. Uh, don't worry about that, that's just the charger. <laughs> um, wiring has been a bit of an issue. Some troubleshooting involved. I will come to that um, hopefully shortly. Uh, don't worry too much about it. Um, we've got the bar end indicators. Indicators are fitted inside these bar ends. Um, they're Rizoma indicators, so if the bike falls over, your expensive indicators don't get smashed, the bar end takes the hit. Um, so that's kind of the, the theory there. Some little low slung mirrors. Um, obviously we did the brakes. Uh, that's the P-type um, NWT switch gear. Uh, I showed you the fly screen, I'm pretty sure. Uh, doo -doo -doo. What else? Yeah, we're getting there. It, it's basically, it's just bolting things back on now. And then I need to bleed up the front brakes. Um, the brake caliper is pretty much, uh, you saw me rebuilding them. Um, so that's fitted up there. Just need to stick the other one on and bleed them up. Brand new. HEL hell lines, uh, Brembo discs, the Samurai mudguard things all looking quite smart now with its uh, with the fender fitted up and the forks in the front end look pretty beefy. So yeah, all in all, we are getting there. We are getting there. So hopefully that has kind of brought you back up to speed with this build and. Um, yeah, again, I apologise for the sort of radio silence for the last couple of months, but this this build kind of hit a bit of a roadblock waiting on that front end, um, and I've been distracted by my truck as well. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this bike, you know, other news, this bike will make it to the Scottish Motorbike Show at uh, Ingolston in Edinburgh, uh, beginning of March next month. I've not got a whole lot more to do to it, so hopefully if I get everything done, it'll be on the NWT electronic stand there. So you can come and check it out if you're going to be at that show. Um, showing off not only the bike but also the electric systems that we've got installed. Uh, yeah, I'm excited about that and excited to catch up with a few friends as well. Closing in on 3,000 subscribers on the channel, which is mad. Um, considering I've not been putting any content out recently. But hopefully you are enjoying the old content. And for any new subscribers, uh, hopefully from now on there will be fresh content fairly regularly that you can catch up with. So... Yeah, again, I appreciate all the support. It's 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 what keeps me doing this is uh, is knowing that people out there are actually interested in what I'm doing. So yeah, thanks for that. As usual, please do give me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and goodbye.